Mark here again at Marin Bikes going through our 2013 lineup. Uh, we're hanging out here with the Mount Vision series, our XM uh, series of trail bikes. So 140 travel, 26 inch wheel trail bike here. Uh, for 2013, continues with evolution of our Quad 3 uh, suspension system. We brought the Quad 3 system out in 2012 and have uh, tweaked it a little bit more. Uh, for that system, we first introduced Quad Link in 2003. And what we're looking at here is a really nice evolution of making the system a little bit lighter weight and a little more user friendly. Uh, with the bike for 2013, it has a much more linear suspension rate to it. Uh, for tech head, that's the change from an old leverage ratio of about 3.65 to 1, ending at around 2. Point about 2.5, and now it's at a 3.45 leverage ratio going to about 2.5, uh, 2 2.4. So uh, what the hell does that mean? It means it's a way more linear uh, for the trail rider on the trail. Uh, a lot more useful travel further into the suspension stroke itself. So the principle of quad three is the same as quad two and the original quad one. You have two linkages that connect the swing arm to the mainframe here. So with that, we don't have a fixed pivot location. We have a moving pivot location, or what we call IPC, our instantaneous pivot center. And how it works, uh, bottom link's hidden by the crank here, but you have this top link and you have a bottom link here, again, with two pivot locations. What happens with that, it creates a pivot location that kind of sits high and forward of the bottom bracket area. So that's the originating pivot location on this bike. Big benefit here is it allows us to effectively have a very long swing arm. That's massive for helping increase the amount of traction it has. Uh, and it also helps with small bump compliance and offering smaller bumps that have more leverage on the system to move. So, you know, very similar uh, principle to like motorcycles. You want to increase the traction, increase the length of your swing arm. It really helps the rear end stay planted on the ground. So, really beneficial for that. Again, you know, high forward pivot location. When you're coasting, you're hitting small bumps, stutter bumps, anything of that nature, uh, the rear, rear wheel has a lot of opportunity to kind of react quickly to those bump inputs. When you add pedaling input into the situation, you definitely want to make sure the bike is you know, fully compliant and allows it, the suspension to move through its suspension stroke without any kind of you know, pedal-induced lockout, anything of that nature. So to make that work, as the suspension compresses, your pivots will rotate and that pivot location migrates down towards the center of the bottom bracket area inside the chain line. And the great benefit there is that it allows the suspension to freely move under pedal force. So when you're on the trail, you have a pivot location that's constantly adjusting. So it's really beneficial. The more pedal input you give it, the more it promotes the rear wheel to extend down into the trail, grab all the traction as possible. Uh, while allowing the pivot location to move under big impact. So the suspension reacts depending on pedaling input, input and bump force. So it's constantly adjusting that's leverage ratio to make that work. The rear wheel also has a prescribed axle path or how the wheel moves. Again, because it's not a fixed pivot location, it's not a fixed arc. Benefit there is it allows the rear wheel to move in a rearward arc at the beginning of its travel, and that is really beneficial for riders who are trying to clean like that technical climb, and you always hit that uh, root section, it always stalls, the bike just spins out from underneath you. Uh, with the system, it allows the rear wheel to kind of go up and over that, so it has a little bit of a rearward movement to keep the center mass of the rider and your momentum moving forward. It doesn't have that initial stall point, so very beneficial. As the suspension goes through its travel, it progressively gets harder and harder to compress it, or what's called a rising rate design. You know, again, another nice feature. If you're coming off a big jump, you're landing flat, you either overshoot the jump, or in my case, I come up too short. Don't want to get bucked off and fly over the bars. Uh, seen that on YouTube too many times. Uh, so with the rising rate design, the suspension progressively gets stiffer and stiffer as you go through the travel. So big benefit there, under hard spikes, the suspension naturally tries to slow itself down. 
So all this is done within the suspension system itself. It basically has a mechanically uh, prescribed rising rate design and that's really beneficial for a wide variety of riders. Uh, the bike we're looking at here is a top level bike, you know, $5,000. You know, if you're a sponsored pro or you're a doctor and you can afford that, rad, you're set. If you're the entry level rider who's going to be on more of a, you know, the entry price point bike, which we started around $2,200, what's great is you don't have to rely on the suspension technology to have that same kind of suspension advantage. A lot of high-end bikes, you know, they have uh, some brands will use, you know, fully uh, proprietary damping systems on their flagship models that doesn't always carry down to the entry level bikes. And we kind of feel that sometimes it's a disadvantage for the entry rider, the Grom that's just getting their bike for the first time, they're going to build it up with better parts as they can afford it. We want to make sure that suspension feeling is consistent from you know the top tier bike all the way down to the entry level model. So that rising rate design, that prescribed arc in the suspension, it's all built into the bike itself and not so much into the suspension technology. With that, definitely work really hard with um, local companies like Fox, who's just down the road from us, on dialing in the damping with these bikes with with the uh, rear suspension. Um, so you'll see, you know, the Fox CTD system on the high-end bikes tripping down as well. Uh, again, four models in the lineup. Three of the four models now will have dropper seat posts. Uh, for next year, we've really tried to dial this bike to have more of a trail rider spec to it. So, you know, a little bit stouter component uh, spec on all the bikes. Uh, and that's kind of carried across on like wheel sets here. Uh, on this is the, the top model here, the XM Pro, which has Easton Havoc wheels, so nice 21 millimeter uh, inner width on the rim there. It's a really stout wheel set for, uh, for trail riding and jumping. Uh, and then the component spec on this bike, SRAM XO drivetrain with the Type 2 rear derailleur with the speed clutch mechanism, so really nice tight riding drivetrain there. Uh, as we go through the front of the bike, Fox 32, Kashima going on, Easton cockpit with the carbon bar and stem system, Avid's XO trail brakes, really nice setup there. Again, three of the four models in a range will have dropper seat posts. Top level bike here gets the RockShox Reverb, and the two bikes below that will have the X-Fusion high-low setup. So uh, again, really a nice trail feature there for uh, riders at different price points. So available extra small through extra large on sizing, and for more information on these bikes, check them out online, we're in bikes.com. So we're hanging out here with the 2013 version of the Rift Zone 2.9er, our uh, XC marathon style uh, cross country bike, 100 millimeter travel here. Uh, first and foremost on quad link bikes, both our Rift Zone series as well as our trail bike, the Mount Vision XM. Uh, we've updated all bearing hardware to Enduro brand bearings, so really nice up spec there for the rider. Enduro brand's been around for a few years now, really kind of killing it with aftermarket sales, with um, high-end bearings for bottom brackets, pivot systems, headsets, um, really adds a lot of value into the linkage system as well on the bike, so really glad to have them on board. Component-wise on this bike, we'll be uh, looking at a SRAM XX and XO mixed combo on this bike. Rolling stock will be Easton's EA70 XCT wheel set, so tubeless compatible wheel set on here if you want to run the bike tubeless. 15% gain in stiffness on the rear end of the bike with the new swing arm and rear axle configuration. So big advantage for riders there again having a much tighter, uh, more precise handling bike in rough terrain. So nice feature again on all four models. So you can check us out on our website marinbikes.com or come find us on Facebook or our Twitter feed.